Making money while you sleep. It's the passive income dream for many young Canadians, and TikTok star Joy Yi Yang is living it. In this episode, we'll hear how dividend investing helped her buy a home and how other young investors can use it to reach their own financial goals. You're watching Inside Investing. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Caitlin Cormier. Joining us is Joy Yi Yang, a financial content creator with over 200,000 followers across TikTok and Instagram. Joy Yi, it's great to have you here with us. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you so much for having me. So you started investing at just 19 years old when most teenagers probably aren't even thinking about it. So what gave you the push to get going so early? It was literally a push when I got kicked out of my house at 19 years old and I quickly went into survival mode scoured the internet for ways to make more money, make my money work for me. And I stumbled upon um, dividend investing. And ever since I got my first dividend payment of 96 cents, I believe from Fortis, I was absolutely hooked and did a ton of research and spent hours and hours every day on YouTube doing research. Absolutely. Like you said, get, got to love when your money works for you. You don't have to do anything. It just goes ahead in that and, and increases for you. You got to love that. Uh, so why is the idea of earning passive income such a priority for you and something that's that uh, more and more young investors are interested in? Got to say thanks to social media for that. I mean, so many people on social media are portraying, you know, the luxury cars, the the mansions, the, you know, luxury items, right? And so I guess when you're earning a passive income, you kind of have this thought of being rich, living the rich lifestyle. And I think that is what gets um, Gen Z's excited for these passive income ideas and, and side hustles. With Gen Z's and side hustles, I feel like they want immediate returns. They want immediate money. But for investing in long-term investing, you will get the money. It's just going to be a little bit more long-term. Absolutely. And you actually were able to kind of achieve some of your financial goals with this type of investing as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've been investing for about six years, um, from 19 to 24, 25 ish. Um, I did eventually buy a condo. I sold all of my stocks, bought a condo, paid off all my debt. And yeah, it's all thanks to investing. Um, specifically dividend investing, I was able to save a lot of money by working two jobs and, you know, living under my means, um, put a lot of my money into the stock market, let it compound. And I think I generated around 22% in returns. Um, so I, I will have to say that I don't think I would have been able to buy my condo without investing my money because it just helps you fast track your savings saving money is is a key part of it but then also if it doesn't grow then it's hard <laughs> exactly. you know that growth piece is is key to kind of reaching those uh reaching those goals uh some young people might find the investing process intimidating and other might find it tough even to save enough money to invest so what do you think they can do to kind of help overcome those challenges firstly you actually don't need a lot of money to start investing i always tell my followers that you can start with 10 20 50 dollars or whatever you have and um, you just got to let the money compound for you and get into the habit of doing that. Absolutely. It can be so overwhelming. You can feel like you need, you know, so much, you need so much knowledge, you need so much money to even get started. Uh, but no, that's great. Absolutely. We just need to kind of have, we need some knowledge, but you can definitely get your feet wet uh, and started investing without too, too much. All right. Before we dive into our conversation, just a quick note to our viewers. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, TD Direct Investing, so you don't miss an episode of Inside Investing. Make sure to let us know in the comments what you think about today's episode and what else you'd like us to cover on the show. Plus, make sure to stick around to the end of our conversation. Joy Yi will tell us some of the habits she feels can help young investors accelerate their passive income growth with dividend investing. With that said, let's get into it. So you're a big proponent of young people starting to invest early. So why do you think that's so important? Yeah, definitely the concept of compound interest plays a huge role. Um, when it comes to investing, time is your biggest asset and not money. So even if 
you know, you're investing $200 instead of like $1,000 every month, the longer you stay in the stock market, um, the bigger returns you'll have. Um, I think I remember doing a YouTube video where I was comparing two investors, investor A and investor B, where investor A started at um, 25. And I think they were only investing maybe $200 a month. And then by the time she retired at 65, she had over a um, million dollars um, invested. Whereas investor B was kind of, you know, not going to start until maybe they were 35 thinking, I'll just invest later when I'm making more money or, you know, when I'm more settled down. <laughs> and so investor B started investing at 35, but she or he wanted to play catch up and saying, um, you know, I'm going to double what investor A is investing in just so I can catch up. So they actually invest 400 instead of 200. But by the end, um, when they're both at 65 and retired, investor B actually has, I think, less than $850,000 saved up. Whereas, where, whereas investor A has more than a million. And my favorite part is that investor B actually put in more money than investor A. But investor A got more money out of the stock market solely because they started earlier. 10 years in the difference, eh? And even with doubling, that's, yeah, yeah. It's, it is it is so impactful to look at those types of, of graphs where you can see if you wait, you know, five years or 10 years to start. I know it's it always seems like, you know, retirement or, you know, everything's off in the future, but you're absolutely right. You know, start as soon as possible because, uh, you know, today is the first day that you can start earning earning money on something, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's excellent. And you pursue a strategy known as dividend investing to help you grow your portfolio. Let's start with the very basics for those who may not be familiar with it. What is a dividend and how does an investor earn dividend income? Yeah, so a dividend is just, it's what a company pays you just for buying and holding their stock. And so since you're a part owner of the company, the company will pay you a part of their profits. Um, so yeah, all you have to do is kind of go into your brokerage platform, buy a dividend, uh, sorry, buy a dividend paying stock, and they pay you either quarterly, monthly, yearly, um, depending on the stock. I reinvest all of my dividends. Um, what that is, is where whenever a company pays me a dividend, I reinvest it back into the company. And so three months later, or when they get when they pay me again, it's going to be a bigger dividend. And using that bigger dividend payment, I buy even more shares of the company. And then it kind of goes like a snowball. And the bigger it is, like the more shares you get and the more shares you have, the more dividends you get. Compounds very beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that, that the eighth wonder of the world, uh, sometimes it's <laughs> referred to as and kind of that snowball where you just start with a small amount and then you just continue to build and build and build over time. Exactly. And the beautiful thing is, is when they pay you a dividend and you re reinvest it, you're gaining more equity in a company, not using your own money. So I'm like a huge fan of passive investing and like not have to do research, not have to constantly stare at the stock, wonder when, when to buy or, or how much to put in when you're reinvesting your dividends. You know, you know that every three months you're reinvesting the amount that you get from the, your dividend. Uh, now, it's interesting that you gravitate towards dividend investing because it's often seen uh, as more relevant for older investors who need retirement income. We think about kind of, like you said, that dividend being paid out for somebody who's kind of looking to live off of their investments. So why do you like the dividend investing specifically? Yeah, I mean, I do get a lot of comments um, on my videos saying, you know, I would never invest in dividend stocks until I retire. Uh, but the, the the difference is, is that when people retire, they have a, a huge capital, right? They, they have a lot of money that goes into these dividend stocks, which in turn pays them enough dividends to live off of. But as a young dividend investor, I guess you can say, um, I'm not spending those dividends. I'm not pulling that money out to spend, right? I'm reinvesting the dividend. And because I'm younger, I have less capital. And so it, it, it's so much easier for me to just invest, you know, $50 here and there or $100 here and there and grow those dividends. And hopefully when I retire, I will have that much capital in the dividend stocks that will pay me. So 
like I said, compound and compounding interest works in your favor as well. The longer you stay in the stock market, you know, think about this timing, timing the market thing, right? So you think about stocks, people who are do, day trading and these sorts of things that are that are doing a whole bunch of research and uh, and constantly trading. Now with this type of investing, uh, it actually takes that timing out of the timing the market out of it, right? Yeah, yeah, it takes the timing out of it, the guessing game out of it, and um, it, and it's really good for I guess beginner investors to follow this path because then you're like not having to research everything, not even knowing what you're looking for. I like investing in dividend stocks that already have a reputation, a good reputation, like dividend aristocrats or dividend kings. Um, so dividend aristocrats are companies that have been paying and growing their dividends for 25 consecutive years. And dividend kings are companies that have been paying and growing their dividends for 50 consecutive years, right? So yeah, like all, all of the um, dividend stocks I have in my portfolio are those dividend aristocrats and dividend kings. Now, that being said, of course, you always do have to review your investments from time to time, right? Make sure that they're still keeping up with the dividends and everything still looks good with those companies. Uh, but certainly does take some of the legwork out of that con continual research, maybe just like periodic reviews as opposed to, uh, you know, keeping a, a hawk eye on it every day or anything like that. Yeah, definitely don't want to look at your investments every single day. I mean, everyone, I think all beginner investors do that where they're like, okay, did I make a thousand dollars yet? And, you know, that's kind of like the wrong mindset, right? Like when you look at your stocks and it's like down and it goes up and down, but for beginner investors, especially they get kind of worried and anxious and stuff. So the less you look at it, the less you let your emotions play a part. Um, if you're a long-term investor, um, you're not going to be looking at your portfolio every day, um, although you want to, but there are some people who, you know, forget about their investments for a year and then they've like, you know, accumulated a thousand dollars more money than they've put in. Absolutely. Yeah. More long-term, short-term pain, long-term gain. Just try and cut out that, uh, that looking in the, in the interim. Uh, now some investors are all in on dividend investing and focus on it exclusively. What is your approach? Investing, you always want to diversify. Um, I mean, there's growth investors, there's dividend investors. I think have the um, growth stocks get you the capital gains, but also building the dividend snowball as well. And you kind of get the best of both worlds and you don't have to be binary to one. Yeah, absolutely. So you want to get that more potential for growth, but then also that continual reinvesting. So you're kind of working on both sides and hopefully getting the best of both worlds. Uh, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but a lot of financial content creators talk about the importance of diversifying income streams. And in your opinion, can dividend investing act as a side hustle to add to the mix? Um, yes, definitely could be a side hustle to add to the mix. Like I said before, you just have to really stay disciplined and you know, delayed gratification, right? You're not going to make so, so, so much in dividends um, when you first start. I mean, it took me like when I first started a year or two or three years to even see like $600 a year in dividends. So definitely a good side hustle if you're um, disciplined enough and consistent enough. Right. If you have some sort of like a, if you got a bonus at work or something like that, or you have some sort of large cash influx, then you can, you know, invest that and potentially get dividends. But like you said, your first dividend was like 96 cents. So we're starting small here <laughs> yeah, and just growing over time, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And just a quick note to our audience, if you're looking for more inspiration to get started with dividend investing, check out our past webinar with author Derek Foster. It's called How I Was Able to Retire at Age 34, and it's available in the Learning Center on WebBroker and on TV's YouTube page. Let's hear more about how you invest in dividend stocks. So first off, how do you know how much dividend income a stock will pay and how often it will pay it? I just simply do a Google search. Um, you can literally type into Google search TD stock dividends, and it will actually show you um, how much the stock is worth, how much they pay, when they pay. Um, and you can even Google like the history of a dividend payment of a stock. Okay, so let's say an investor wanted to earn $1,000 of dividend income per year from their investment in a stock, as an example. How could they figure out how much money they would need to invest to earn that much in dividend income? 
Yeah, and the math is super simple. So let's say stock X was worth twenty eight dollars per share, and let's say they pay you eighty nine cents per share. What you would do is take the thousand dollars divided by zero point eight nine, and that will give you how many shares you need、uh, to get a thousand dollars, and that would give you one thousand one hundred twenty three shares. And since each share is worth twenty eight dollars, you would take the number twenty eight. And multiply it by the amount of shares you need, so one thousand one hundred twenty-three, and that would equal thirty-one thousand four hundred and forty-four. So you would need thirty-one thousand four hundred and forty-four dollars to get a thousand dollars in dividend. And、um, what's great is that sometimes、um, companies increase the dividend amount, and especially when you reinvest your dividends, like I always talk about, then you're accumulating more shares without even your using your own money. Okay, awesome, super simple. Yeah, I just need to know the amount per year and what your goal is as far as how much income. Do some quick math and some multiplication. You're good to go. Exactly. Yeah.、Uh, so, can you take us through your process of actually researching and investing in a dividend stock? So, I would often look for stocks that you know have been paying and growing their dividends for a long time.、Um, therefore, I know that I'm not taking that much of a risk. I'm not that risky of an investor to kind of hope and pray that a company will pay their dividends next month or something.、Uh, so why do you stick to investing in those dividend aristocrats and kings? You talked a little bit about what they were.、Um, so why is it that you kind of really like to invest in those specific companies? Yeah.、Um, again, it's just like the rep and the consistency they have that makes me feel safe.、Um, again, dividends are.、Um, It's not a must for companies to pay, and so、um, just for them to have that reputation of being a dividend aristocrat or a dividend king, it shows me that they are making enough money to be paying and to be growing their dividends for so 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 many consecutive years.、Um, so, although some people say dividend stocks are riskier,、um, investing in those ones who's paid and Growing their dividends for so long is less risky,、um, so I really like them for that reputation. And it's really harmful for a company to again stop paying their dividends after they've gained that reputation, right? Like imagine being thirty years deep in this like consistent payment and then kind of just not doing it out of nowhere. It would really harm the reputation of a stock as well. Yeah, absolutely. So it gives you some confidence in the fact that they've been able to do it, and that it's in their best interest to continue doing it. So you have a little bit to kind of to,、yeah. to lean back on. And what sort of dividend yield do you look for with these companies? Is there a specific range that you typically look for? I believe、um, anything six to seven percent or under would be great. Anything above that, a company would be paying. You know, a lot of money, and th- that is the one thing that、um, non-dividend investors say all the time: is if a company is paying you so much in dividends, that must mean that they're not putting that money back into the company. So the so the capital growth might be slow. Yeah, so that's constantly changing depending on what's going on with the stock price. Like you said, the stock goes down, then all of a sudden we have a higher dividend yield. And- Yeah. Will, you know, if it looks too good to be true, sometimes,、uh, sometimes it is. <laughs> How many dividend stocks do you hold at a time, and which investing account do you like to keep them in? I believe I have about eleven or twelve dividend stocks in my portfolio. Every single stock or ETF in my portfolio do pay dividends,、um, <laughs> and I do hold it in my TFSA. I think the TFSA is great for beginner investors. You don't have to worry about the taxes. Um, all you have to worry about is the contribution room and、um, the withdrawals and the rules to that.、Um, so when I first started investing, I only had my tax-free savings account,、um, and the reason why I've been using that for so long is again not having to worry about the taxes.、Um, all you have to do is a simple Google search on what is my TFSA contribution room.、Um, And then once you know the contribution room, all you need to do is not surpass the contribution room. There are accounts now, like the first home savings account and the RRSP.、Um, those 
are a bit more complicated, but I would always suggest just maxing out your TFSA first before you get into the accounts where you like do have to pay taxes. And, and for the first home savings account, it's very um, important that people know that it's for your first home, right? So whatever money that you invest in your first home savings account, it needs to go towards a home. Um, so for people who are investing to pay off debt or to pay off their car, to get a car maybe, then those accounts wouldn't be the best option for them. But a TFSA, you can withdraw that money anytime for whatever reason without paying any taxes. Right. Anything you earn, capital gains, dividends, interest, all that stuff is tax free. You're not going to receive a receipt in the mail saying this is how much you yeah. owe. Now, there is there is one exception uh, to that, of course, with U.S. stock dividends, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you are holding a U.S. stock in your tax free savings account, there will be a 15 percent withholding tax. But the good thing is, is that they take that tax out before that dividend even hits your account. So you don't have to worry about that. Yes. Right. Yes. It's always, if you don't see it, then it's maybe it's a little better off <laughs> that yeah, way. Out of, yeah. sight, out of mind. Uh, so how do you decide which of the dividend stocks you hold to invest in at any given time? So if you have additional funds, you're looking to, to invest, you know, additional money, how do you decide which one of your investments to, to put more money into? Definitely. If they're down that month, if the, if they cost less to buy that month, that is like a huge indicator of me wanting to get more equity in that company. Um, but also looking at the percentage allocation of the stock, right? Like if I'm like 20% on this stock and only like 5% on this stock, maybe I should kind of not put all of my eggs in one basket and increase the percentage allocation of different stocks. Right. So you're not like overweighted in one particular company and you want to make sure that you're kind of balanced out between between everyone there and buying on sale. Exactly. Yeah. Buy low. Always. <laughs> Last question for you, Joy. What are some of the habits you feel can help young investors grow a dividend portfolio over time as you have? I mean, definitely start the habit of even starting small, get into the habit of knowing that you have this bill. I, I would treat investing as a bill to pay every month. For example, I started with $500 a month. Definitely do your research when you're buying stocks and um, reinvest your dividends to get that dividend snowball going. Because once you withdraw those dividends and you spend it, it's not snowballing, it's not compounding. All right, Joy, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks for sharing why you believe dividend investing can make sense for young investors and taking us through your investing process. And on that note, I wanted to take a moment to hop into WebBroker to show our viewers how they can research and get started building a dividend stock portfolio. All right, one of the tools we have on WebBroker in order to find some of these dividend paying stocks is under research, tools, and screeners. Once we get in here, we're gonna actually go to some preset screens that have been created already with some specific criteria in mind to find sort of a particular type of uh, investment that you're looking for. So you can see there's a lot of different options here as far as different presets. Uh, but what we're gonna focus on today is we're gonna go under the top dividends, which shows stocks paying and growing their dividends for shareholders that seek cash income from their investments. Once we click here, we're going to see that there's actually 528 matches, which is quite a few matches to begin with. So let's go ahead right off and filter down a little bit further. I'm going to choose under exchange here and choose Canadian only investments just to filter it down a bit. Um, as I scroll down, I will see that there is the criteria that's listed for these stocks is dividend growth rate, five year average, dividend yield and stock price. The top 10 listed here are kind of the, the top stocks that match that specific criteria that has been set. And if I want to filter down even a bit further, I can actually click on that criteria and make changes to it. So perhaps uh, I want the dividend growth rate to be uh, up to a maximum, let's just say of 35%. I, want, I don't want to think that it might be too good to be true. For dividend yield, maybe I'm looking at between 4 and 12% dividend yield. Again, just kind of filtering down a bit more. I'm gonna close and we'll see we have 37 matches now. Uh, I have the ability to rearrange these results based on this criteria. So for example, if I wanted to see the one with the highest dividend yield out of these results, I can simply click 
twice and it will rearrange to the highest dividend yield. Uh, same thing with the dividend five year growth. Uh, I can rearrange and see them in that order. If there's a particular investment that I wanna do a bit more research on, I can go ahead and search. You'll notice um, when I click on the investment, it's gonna show me here, this is the stock symbol for this particular company, LIF. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I can see here how it meets the criteria that I have listed, but instead I'm gonna go right up to my search bar here and type in LIF. And I'm actually able to see some additional information about this company up in this search bar. So it's gonna show me kind of a quick chart uh, to look at this company. Over here, I'm gonna see information about the price, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on fundamentals and it's gonna show me uh, some information about this company's dividend. So the X dividend date, the dividend payment date, as well as how much the quarterly dividend is and the dividend yield. So lots of information available kind of pretty quickly about these particular stocks. And if I decide I wanna do a little bit more research, keep my eye on this particular company, I can just go ahead and add to watch list and choose any one of the watch lists I already have uh, and add this particular stock to it so that I can view it in the future. Okay, Joy, any final thoughts you'd like to share with our viewers? Uh, so final thoughts I have is definitely start now, start building that dividend snowball or even compounding in the stock market. Um, stay disciplined and don't let your emotions run your strategy. Awesome, love it. Thanks again for joining us. And for those in our audience, make sure to register for our upcoming live webinars and check out our library of on-demand content available in the Learning Center and on our YouTube page. See you all next time. Have more questions? Check out the links to the right and in the description below.